right as I get my review up. Card Crew blesses us with version 2.2 of Dr. Robotnik's Ring Races. Hello everyone, my name is Cryfrey and today I'm going to be covering the change notes for Dr. Robotnik's Ring Races version 2.2. I've already made an, an additional review of the game. For that you can watch the review, the last video that I put out. But yeah, I want to cover it today because Overall, once I've read the patch notes and now that I actually had time to play this update, my impressions are definitely positive and with this update they have definitely fixed what was bothering me most about the game and that is being the rubber banding CPUs, but we'll get to that just in a moment. The too long didn't watch version for this video is the game has been made overall easier in several aspects and got a lot of new quality of life changes. The major ones being that the ordering option, the easier CPUs and also lingering partial damage in the special stages for the UFO. What exactly changed? I will be covering in this video. There's a lot to talk about. I want to first mention the CPU adjustments. These ones are the most important to me personally. And they're the following. I'm just gonna read them out. So, first off, we have CPU rubber banding relaxes towards the end of the race. That is very good. Means that if you wish to bank in now 20 rings for the ring bonus, that is now much more likely to happen. Perfect. Perfect change. CPU races require more speed to cross tripwire and to hydroplane over water when rubber banding. That is good. That is definitely good. That makes it so if there is a certain section that they need to pass through, that they actually need more speed to pass this one. So it's not always guaranteed, which makes it less likely for them to take shortcuts and then also overtake you unfairly or even too often when it, when it comes to the case. CPUs below a level 8 no longer use insert. Now this one was actually pretty interesting, but I think overall it's for the better. I never had it once happen to me when I play Grand Prix that some CPU used insta whip on me. Like I've seen them use it, but I haven't been personally affected by it. But I welcome the change. Very good for those people that needed it. And these two, okay, I need to cover these two. Like I need to put them into the, into the spotlight. These are insanely funny to me. The first one, fixed an oversight that caused CPU ring boost to last longer than intended on many maps and fixed an oversight that could significantly increase CPU ring boost speed. These two are insanely funny to me. That, that is incredible. The gang, the, the racers, they were so desperate to overtake a master racer like me that they pulled out the cheat card. I can't even be mad. That is amazing. <laughs> But yeah, with all of these changes now done, I can say for certain, yes, this helps massively. I feel way more now in control of my position, and it feels now actually like the playing field has been turned down a lot. It is amazing, and I feel this is really good. The rivals are still here, we'll be having plenty of races in single player, and I'm just amazed because of all, very good patch. I've had a lot of fun now playing Grand Prix, and I can now see myself actually doing this now for the long run. Okay, I'm gonna be now going through the rest of the change log and I'm not gonna cover everything, just the ones that I feel are most important or at least are interesting enough for me. So first off, we have the new ordering option. This is a new accessibility toggle for profiles. This is essentially the same as auto roulette. The follower that you have selected will give you rings at whenever it feels it is a good time to do so. Definitely very good. I'm always happy that the game or that the devs are making this game more accessible to new people and it's gonna be easier to convince others. So hey, if you need like training wheels yet, like play with ordering for a little bit, see where it uses them and then just get a feel for it. Very good change overall. I very much welcome ordering. Next up, in general gameplay, uh, the couple of ones that I've picked out here are Improved general handling at high speeds, especially for heavyweights. Very good. I didn't cover this in my initial, initial review, but it definitely felt like it was a lot more hard to steer. And I can say, this is the case. Feels good, feels amazing, perfect change. Tricks are now input with direction plus A, allowing you to slightly adjust your angle on the way up. Now, I actually wasn't too sure what to think about this, but now after playing it just a little bit and getting used to this, I can say I feel this is actually 
kind of really good. Only thing that I would like, if it if it's possible, is to rebind the A button to something else. For me, it would be more comfortable to just use the drift button or the item button, just like something else. Like it's cool. I can live with it. Would wish that I could rebind, but if if I can rebind, let me know. I'm not sure. I haven't checked. If it's not, it's okay. I can live with it. You know, start with 10 rings was five. Um, makes perfect sense to me. I felt like five at the, like I was fine with it, but it definitely felt like it was too little. I think 10 here is the good amount for a race. Now items, now these are interesting because there's actually overall a lot of good stuff in here. So first up, ball hawk now explodes on contact with walls instead of bouncing. First time I've read this, was a little bit sad. It was always very funny to make it ricochet off walls and then also and then hit people in very narrow curves. I can understand why this was done. Wish we could have it back, the ricochet, but that's fine. That's completely fine. Um, a bunch of invincibility nerves. We have invincibility duration has been reduced to 7 to 17 seconds. Bonus activation duration scales slower. Players need to be farther away to receive extra time. Okay. And also invincibility hits inflict a lower tumble with fear bounces and dock the victim's item away. Overall, very good. Yeah, honestly, invincibility was fit all solution for really anything. It was it honestly was kind of a stupid item to get. It still is, for my opinion in my opinion, a good item to have if if you just need a good around tool, but these changes are definitely warranted. Shrink grow lasers now grant less grow time on players who are already powered up. Uh, shrinks effect. Okay, for this one, I'm fine with this one, but the next sentence that comes up, they say that shrinks effect can usually be dodged by adapt players, so its direct benefit to its users is an important part of its balance. From experience, it depends heavily on the map. I feel in my personal experience, this tends not to be the case, either because you're just too, like, going too fast, or trying to slow down and actually trying to dodge the laser would just be too slow in, in general. But that's fine. I think these changes are um, good. Bubble Bounce now pops Bubble Sheet in first place. Uh, who forever has not seen on Twitter, there was a very famous uh, tweet going around with the Bubble Shield being able to infinitively B hop around and then just have overall improved handling, acceleration, just really just. It was a skillful endeavor that you definitely had to practice, and it was also math dependent. I find it amazing that Bubble Bounce is still in, in the game. I was totally expecting it to be completely removed from the game, but they instead decided to make the Bubble Bounce pop in first place only. I still find it amazing that you can use it as a catch-up tool. Honestly, Card Crew, thank you so much for going this approach. Two heavy thumbs up. Thank you. Genuinely, thank you. Oh yeah, Grand Prix. Grand Prix has been adjusted also just a little bit. Now Grand Prix is, instead of having the difficulties easy, normal, hard and master, they have been renamed to relaxed, intense, vicious and master. Can definitely see where they're going with this. I feel this is a better way of describing them. Kudos on changing that. It makes the player apparent on exactly what they're getting themselves into, I feel. On all difficulties but master CPU, racer difficulty decreases by an additional level by when using a continue. Perfect. Thank you very much. Really cool. That is that is that is good. That is good. Uh, adaptive difficulty. Here we go. We love to see it. Now this one is kind of huge for me. After using it to continue in a sealed star, part of the damage you've dealt so far will be preserved. This effect can continue to stack with each attempt. Wow. I was not expecting that, to be honest. I was fully expecting the special stages to remain the, the, way, the, the way that they are. But now that you can actually have damage carried over, from what I've dealt to the UFO and continuous attempts is kind of amazing. And I'm just, like, like, seriously, again, thank you, Card Crew. I mean, I'm already have the, all the Chaos Emeralds, but generally, thank you, because the, these, no, it's not gonna be as tedious to get all of the Chaos Emeralds. <laughs> and, and then Super Emeralds. I can just say, hey, I did it uh, without, uh, without, without that modifier. And so I guess now I have bragging rights, but it's whatever, it's whatever. Next up, the challenges. Now, challenges and unlocks. Now, this one is going to be, again, interesting because here, this is my second big critique point that I had before. I had a negative point about the unlocks, that there are too many and that the unlock conditions are sometimes too extreme or too time consuming. While they haven't changed the amount of unlocks and have only slightly adjusted 
a few of the challenges to be less time consuming. What they have done now instead is give a lot more player agency of what the player wants to do to get these unlocks either legit, even for passwords. Like there's a lot, there's a lot of choice here for the player, which is insanely generous if I'm honest. The biggest one that I want to bring up here from the challenges tab is a new password has been added solely to claim 25 chow keys. Wow. That is about, let me lie, eight hours of playtime, roughly. I was seriously not expecting that. After I've seen this patch note, it felt like an incredibly generous act to me because this is, there, there's a lot of content, like a lot of unlocks in, in ring races, like an insane amount. And I'm very sure that the devs and the card crew, they wanted you to go through this, at least to some extent. But to just give you 25 chow keys whenever you want is, is insanely generous of them. I kind of feel bad for punching in the character in color codes now. I mean, I still wouldn't really be able to go through them legit. I still find it a, a, a little bit too boring. You have so many options to go to, to tackle these unlocks unlocks the way you wish. If you don't care, you can just punch in the code to unlock them all. If you only want to punch in a certain challenge, you can get yourself 25 chow keys. Hey, do you want all colors? Uh, here's a code for all colors. Here's a code for all characters. I'm, wow, genuinely, freaking amazing. Card crew, thank you. This is, this is a lot of player agency you're giving here to me and also to all of the other players. And these now were all of the patch notes that I personally found interesting for Dr. Robotnik's Ring vs. version 2.2. And overall, amazing. I have absolutely no complaints. And if I have, then we're honestly starting to go into the nitpicking territory. Ring Racers 2 is now better than ever. And if version 2.1 wasn't already fantastic, version 2.2 catapults it up to an even higher plane that I didn't even think was possible. The game has been made easier, the single player is now much more tolerable, and Card Crew has given us an immense amount of control and player agency on how we want to experience, this, experience the game. Considering, and I'm gonna be honest, considering that they have worked on this game for over now five years, or roughly two close five years, the fact that they are allowing this is nothing short of generous and it signals to me that they only want the best for the players. It can feel a little bit degrading to have the players go, I don't want to go through this unlock system after you've put so much work into it. And I honestly didn't expect them to give us so much control over it, but I am genuinely amazed by this patch. Generally, card crew, thank you. Version 2.2 kicks ass. And I'm gonna be racing now at the next level again before I lose my mind. This has been Cryfry. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.